हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर सतीश एस बोरनारे डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जेनेटिक्स एंड प्लांट ब्रीडिंग के के वाफ कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर नासिक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द टॉपिक बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड इट्स कंजर्वेशन सो फ्रेंड्स द टर्म बायोडाइवर्सिटी इज मेड अप ऑफ टू वर्ड्स फर्स्ट इज बायो दैट मीनिंग लिविंग थिंग्स एंड डाइवर्सिटी मीनिंग वेरिएशन और वराइटीज so this biodiversity refers to the variety and variability among the all groups of the living organism and the ecosystem complexes in which they occur or it alternatively defined as the sum total of the species of plants animals and microorganism occurring in the given habitat or according to the convention of biological diversity in 1992 the biodiversity is the variability among the living organism from all sources including interalia terrestrial marine and other aquatic ecosystem and ecological complexes of which they are part so friends in simple words the biodiversity is nothing but the diversity of life form present in the earth this picture clearly explain the biodiversity so <clears throat> there are different levels of biodiversity first one is a genetic diversity second one is a specific diversity and third one is a ecological diversity so let us see first what is mean by genetic diversity when the gene within the same species show different version due to the new combinations that is recombination is called as genetic variability means in this genetic diversity there is variability within a species for example all rice varieties belongs to the species oryza sativa but there are thousands of wild and cultivated varieties of rice which show variation at the genetic level and differ in their color size shape aroma nutritional content and many more of the grain so the same rice species having more than thousands of varieties which having differ in their various characteristics this is the genetic diversity of rice second one is specific diversity or spe sorry species diversity what is that species diversity means this diversity or this is the variability found within the population of the species or between different species of the community so here the variability is present in different species that is between the species of the community it represents broadly the species richness and their abundance in the community means which species in richness and which species is abundance and which species is scarce having less number for example single cell viruses and bacteria etc and multicellular plants animals and fungus so this is the species diversity means diversity between the species <coughs> then third one is ecological diversity this is the diversity of ecological complexity showing variation in the ecological niches tropic structure food waves nutrient cycle etc and also the physical parameters like moisture altitude temperature and precipitation etc so this is the variability and differences observed in different ecological system that is <coughs> present in different different ecology systems or ecosystems such as desert rainforest mangroves and coral reef these are the example of ecological diversity and there is thus a tremendous diversity present within the ecosystem along this gradient here we can see first is the different varieties of rice so this is the genetic diversity in rice in second picture we can see the different species among the ecosystem so it is it is the species diversity that means the diversity between different species of the ecosystem and in ecosystem diversity the different ecosystems like desert coral reef 
tundra and others having diversity so these are the three different levels of biodiversity then measurement of biodiversity this biodiversity in is measured in alpha diversity beta diversity and gamma diversity what is meant by that alpha diversity the alpha diversity indicates the number of species in a single community that is richness or evenness of a species the index can be used to compare the number of species in different ecosystem types then beta diversity this diversity indicates the degree to which a species composition changes along with environmental gradient and last one is a gamma diversity this gamma diversity indicate rate at which additional species are are encountered as a geographical replacement within the habitat type in different localities and it is always applied to large geographical area so these are the three different measurements of the biodiversity so next to that what are the different values of biodiversity as we all know that biodiversity is having the different values first of it first of which is consumptive use value so this biodiversity has consumptive use that means direct direct <coughs> values this direct use values where biodiversity product can be harvested and consumed directly for example we will get fuel food drugs fiber which we can directly consume so this is the consumptive value of a biodiversity in which food as we all know that a large number of wild plants are consumed by human being as a food about 80000 edible plant species have been reported from wild and about 90% of present day food crops have been domesticated from wild tropical plants a large number of wild animals are also our sources of food so this biodiversity play an important role as a food of human being with different plants and animals as a sources of food then these <coughs> drugs and these are the sources of drugs and medicine also about 75% of the world population depend upon the plants or plant extract for medicine we all know that the plants having secondary metabolites which will be used is as a drugs and these are available in the biodiversity for example the wonder drug namely penicillin is prepared from the fungus penicillium then quinine this quinine is prepared from cinchona plants then digitalin from digitalis purpurea then another two important vinblastin and vincristin these are the anti cancer drugs prepared from the plant periwinkle so these are the drugs and medicine which we will exploited from the plants and plant extracts then fuel our forest has been used as used since ages for a fuel wood the fossil fuels coal petroleum and natural gas are also product of the fossilized biodiversity so this is the another aspect or value of a biodiversity so we can consume the food medicine drugs or fuel and this is the consumptive value of a biodiversity then second value is productive use value so these are the commercially usable values where the product is marketed and sold so besides direct consumption we are also use biodiversity as a productive use and for that purpose we use the different products of the biodiversity marketed them and sold them this may include animal products like tusk of the elephants musk from the musk deer silk from the silkworms wool from the sheep for of many animals lark from the lark insects etc all of which are traded in a market and these these products are having a very good market in international market 
many industries also are dependent upon the productive use of um, this biodiversity for example the paper and pulp industry plywood industry railway slipper industry silk industry textile industry ivory works leather industry pearl industry so these are the different industries which are depend on the productive value of the biodiversity so this biodiversity provide the raw material for these industries and developing countries in asia africa and latin america are the richest biodiversity centers and wildlife products are smuggled and marketed in large quantity so to some rich western countries and countries like china and hong kong also where export of cat skins and neck skins fetches of blooming businesses so this is the productive value of a biodiversity which gives a good market or give a good business to the many people then third one is a social value these are the values associated with a social life customs religions and psycho spiritual aspect of the people so these are the related to our social values for example many of plants are considered as a holy or sacred in our countries like india where there are the plants like tulsi people mango lotus bell and many more are worshiped by from many years the leaves fruits or flower of these plants are used in worship or other or the plant itself is a worship the tribal people's social life songs dances and customs are very closely woven around the wildlife so are they they are very closely related to the <coughs> forest or wildlife for their customs and religions many animals like cow snake bulls peacock wolves etc also having significant social importance as as we all know that we are also worshiping the different animals in our in our tradition thus biodiversity has a distinct social value attached with the different societies and different section of the countries then ethical values or existence value the ethical value in other word also called as existence value it involves ethical issues like all life must be preserved and it is based on the concept of life and late life if we if we want our human race to survive then we must protect all biodiversity become bio because biodiversity is the value so in our <coughs> tradition or in our ethical issues we are always say that life and let life so the biodiversity is having ethical value or existence value the ethical value means that we may or may not use the species but knowing the very fact that this species exists in the nature gives us pleasure for example kangaroo zebra and giraffe we directly doesn't depend on that species but we kn- know the fact that this species exists in the nature gives us pleasure so this is the ethical value or existence value of a biodiversity then aesthetic value a great aesthetic value is attached to the biodiversity no one of us would like to visit a vast stretches of the barren land with no signs of the visible life it is indeed that we always visit our biodiversity rather than the barren land so this is the aesthetic value of biodiversity people from the far and wide spend a lot of time and money to visit the wilderness areas where they can enjoy the aesthetic value of biodiversity and this type of tourism is known as eco tourism and nowadays this type of eco tourism is flourishing day by day because of the aesthetic value of biodiversity then option value option value includes the potentials of biodiversity that are presently unknown and need to be explored so this is the optional value in the sense there is a possibility that we may have some potential cure from complex diseases existing with the depth of marine ecosystem or a tropical rainforest so this biodiversity also play a important role 
in option values where we can relax. Thus, the option value of the biodiversity suggests that any species may prove to be a miracle species someone, someday. The biodiversity is like a precious gift of the nature presented to us. This is the nothing but the option value of biodiversity and this includes the values in terms of option to visit the area where the varieties of flora and fauna or especially some endemic, rare or endangered species exist which we cannot see over the rest of the places. So this is the option value of biodiversity. Last one is eco ecosystem service value. So this is the non-consumptive use that means we can direct, not directly exploit this but indirectly the service provided by ecosystem like prevention of soil erosion, prevention of flood, maintenance of soil fertility, cyclic, cyclic of nutrients, cycling of nutrients, fixation of nitrogen, cycling of water, their role as a carbon sinks, pollutant absorption and reduction of the threat of global warming. So these are the indirect benefit which we will get from the ecosystem or biodiversity. So this is the uh, non-consumptive use or ecosystem service value of a biodiversity. And different categories of biodiversity value clearly indicate that the ecosystem species and genetic diversity all have enormous potential and a decline in biodiversity will lead to the huge economical, ecological and socio-cultural losses. So, for that purpose, we have to conserve this biodiversity from the different threats. So, India is a mega diversity nation. As we all know that India is rich in biological diversity of flora and fauna. The Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India records 47,000 species of the plants and 81,000 species of the animal which is about 7% and 6-5% respectively of a global flora and fauna. The values may be differ in a recent but in nutshell we have the rich biodiversity of flora and fauna. Our India is 11th in terms of number of endemic species of higher vertebrates, 6 among the center of diversity and origin of agriculture crops and India is also one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries in the world and out of 12, total 25 biodiversity hotspot in the world, India possesses two. First one is the Northeast region and second is Western Ghat or Sayadri Ghat. So the hotspot means the area where ample diversity of the plants and animals are present. Our Sayadri Ghat or Western Ghat and Northeast region is the example or two hotspot out of 25 observed in the world, these are the two present in the India and thus we are having a rich biological, biological, biological diversity. <coughs> so there are also threats to the biodiversity, we have to mitigate we have, or we have to study the different threats to the biodiversity so we, we can minimize or mitigate them. First one is habitat loss and fragmentation. So the different habitats which are present in the biodiversity are get lost or extinct due to the our day to day activities or our over exploitation of natural resources. So the destruction and loss of natural habitat is the single largest cause of the biodiversity loss and we can see here the dramatical example of habitat loss come from the tropical rainforest. Once this tropical rainforest covering more than 14% of the earth land surface, now they are merely present in 6%. So the drastic loss of the habitat from 14% to the 6% and by acreage and along with that different habitat is get extinted. Then Amazon rainforest, it is alternatively called as lungs of the planet harboring probably millions of the species is being cut and cleared for cultivating soybeans or for the conversion of grassland for raising beef cattle. So this is the another major concern of habitat loss. Then billions of the hectares of the forest and grasslands have been cleared over past 10,000 years 
for conversion into agriculture land, pasture, settlement areas or development projects. So this is well, very well known fact that for our agricultural development or overall development project, we have constructed various um, <coughs> dams and agriculture lands and settlement areas so that we clear the lands, grasslands and forest and due to that the different habitat is get extended. Besides the total loss, the degradation of many habitats by pollution also threatens the survival of many species. When large habitats are broken into small fragments due to various human activities, mammals and birds required in large territories and certain animals with the migratory habits are badly affected leading to the population declines. So this is the fragmentation of habitat which leads to the population of declines in population of that particular habitat. So this is the first major threat to biodiversity that habitat fragmentation and habitat loss. Then next one is a poaching. So what is this poaching means? The poaching means illegal trade of wildlife product by killing prohibited endangered animals that is the poaching is the another threat to wildlife or biodiversity. As we all know that there are international ban on killing the prohibited endangered animals. But despite that the trade in products from endangered species, smuggling of wildlife atom like furs, hides, horns, tusks, live specimens and herbal products worth millions of dollars per year continues. The developing nations in Asia, Latin America and Africa are the richest source of the biodiversity and have enormous wealth and wildlife of wildlife, wealth of wildlife. The rich countries in Europe, North America and some affluent countries in Asia like Japan, Taiwan and Hong Kong are the major important of the wildlife products or wildlife itself. So this is the another major threat to the biodiversity that is illegal trafficking of the wildlife products or wildlife itself. So this is the major concern today which leads to the loss of biodiversity. Then last one is a man-wildlife -wild conflict. As human encroachment continues into the forest areas, reaches a conflict between man and the wildlife perhaps because it is an issue of survival of both. So these man-wildlife conflicts arise due to our encroachment into the forest area. Dwindling habits of the tigers, elephants, rhinos and bears due to the shrinking forest cover compels them to move outside the forest and attack the fields or sometimes even humans. As we very often see that villagers put electric wiring around their rice crop fields to avoid from these wild animals. The elephants get injured, suffered in pain and turn violent and may attack on the human being. Earlier they are used to wildlife corridors through which wild animals used to migrate seasonally in groups to other areas. But due to the development activities and human settlement in the corridor, the path of wildlife has been disrupted and animals attack the settlements. And it is now common that very instances occur when man-animal conflicts keep on coming in a several state of our countries and we can see the different news in different state that different wild animals or forest animals, forest wildlife animals attacking on human being. So this is the major concern uh, <clears throat> that man-wildlife conflicts, this arise due to the loss of forest area or biodiversity. So these are the major concerns we have seen till now. And we also know that the biodiversity is very important for our day-to-day -day life or for our sustainable life, lifestyle. So we have to conserve this biodiversity. And for that, conserving the biodiversity, there are two methods. First one is in-situ conservation and second one is ex-situ conservation. This in-situ conservation means 
the conserve the biodiversity within its natural habitat that means as such it present while in case of ex situ we conserve this biodiversity away from its natural habitat outside its natural habitat in the form of seed bank gene bank zoos botanical gardens so tip banks plant banks and field banks etc and while conserving in situ we conserve it in national parks then biosphere reserves gene sanctuaries etc so this is the broader <coughs> criteria for conservation of the biodiversity now let us see in detail the first one is in situ conservation the in situ conservation means within habitat and this is achieved by protection of wild flora and fauna in nature itself as we see earlier in the form of national <coughs> natural national park biosphere reserve or gene sanctuaries so at present in india we have now one not four national parks 551 wildlife sanctuaries 131 marine protected areas 18 biosphere reserve 88 conservation reserve and 127 community reserve and covering a total of 165088 km square kilometer area in total there are 870 protected areas which make 5.06% of the geographical area of the country so this is the total <coughs> in situ conserved area of our countries the biosphere reserve are the conserves some representative ecosystem as a whole for long term in in situ conservation and examples are in india we have nanda devi norek manas sundarbans gulf of manar nilgiri kerala great nicobar sen simlipal simlipal bio reserves so these are the examples of different bio reserves present in india <coughs> next one is a, a national park a national park is a area dedicated for a conservation of wildlife along with its environment and it is also meant for enjoyment to the tourism but without impairing the environment so these are the protected areas and grazing of the domestic animal animal domestic animal all private rights and forest activities are prohibited within the national park so these are the protected areas and they are meant for a tourism and for <coughs> conservation of wildlife for example the kajiranga national park in assam for one horn hor, rhino gir national park for uh, indian lion in gujarat periyar uh, periyar national park for elephant in kerala then <coughs> kana national park for tiger in mp and in corbett up uh, corbett national park in up for tiger also and ranthambore rajasthan for tiger then Sa <coughs> sariska rajasthan for tiger these are the different national park present in the india so these are the important one then wildlife sanctuaries these wildlife sanctuaries are also protected areas where killing hunting shooting or capturing of wildlife is prohibited except under the control of highest authority however the private ownership rights are permissible and forest operations are also permitted to the extent to an extent that they do not affect the wildlife adversely so this is the basic difference between national park and wildlife sanctuaries these national parks are totally pro, um, prohibited area while wildlife sanctuaries have some relaxation but provided that they do not affect the wildlife adversely and some of the important wildlife sanctuaries in india are ghana bird sanctuary rajasthan hazaribagh sanctuary bihar nal sarovar birds bird sanctuary in gujarat <coughs> this is the in situ conservation now let us see ex situ conservation this ex situ conservation is conserving the biodiversity outside or away from its natural habitat and this is done by establishment of gene bank seed bank zoos botanical garden and cultural culture different cultures seed cell culture organ cultures 
<coughs> collections. So this is the ex situ conservation and this type of conservation is mainly done for conservation of crop varieties or wild relatives of the crops and all the local varieties which are having the wide <coughs> scope and importance in future and the main objectives of the conserving the total genetic diversity of the crop species for future crop improvement or for uh, forestation programs. So this is <coughs> the ex situ conservation in which we use gene bank, seed bank or other <coughs> zoos, botanical gardens or culture collection. So in India we have following important gene bank or seed bank facilities, facilities and different organization that carried out this work. First one is the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources NBPGR. This is located at New Delhi. Here the agricultural and horticultural crops and their wild relatives are preserved by different method and mostly important one are preserved in the form of cryopreservation. So cryopreservation is the method of preservation for long term in which the seeds or pollens or any material of the plant is stored in liquid nitrogen at a minus 196 degree Celsius. So this is the cryopreservation in which a different varieties of rice, permalate, brassica, turnip, radish and number of crops have been preserved successfully in liquid nitrogen for several years without losing seed viability. So this is the important aspect of the cryopreservation. This cryopreservation store or conserve the <coughs> plant genetic material without losing their viability. Then second one is a National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resource NBAGR and this is located at Karnal Haryana. This is related to plants, uh, this is related to animals. This NBPGR is related to plants uh, conservation while this NBAGR related to the conservation of plant animals. It preserves the semen of domesticated bovine animals. The animals which are very important and for their breeding purpose this National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resource preserve their semen. Third one is the National Facility for Plant Tissue Culture Repository and it is also present <coughs> at New Delhi for the development of the facility of the conservation of varieties of crop plants, trees by tissue culture. So this is the important <coughs> aspect of this organization that this organization stores the biodiversity by the method of tissue culture and this facility has been created within NBPJ. So these are the three important organization which overlook the ex situ conservation in India. So thanks friend, this is for education purpose only and references are as below. Thanks once again.